I just made a tabular column to differentiate what is a method and how far it is suitable to solve a question. Now here what is D. Lambert's principle or it is Newton's law? Is it not? Newton's law. This Newton's law or D. Lambert's principle, it is used for solving a problem which involves force and acceleration alone. It's clear? Force and acceleration alone can be suitably solved. See, any method can be used for solving any you know particular uh, velocity or displacement anything, but which is more suitable is a question. The purpose of writing this uh, table of column is, when you read a question, you should come to a conclusion that this particular method is the easiest way of solving the particular topic, I mean problem. That is what the use of this table of column. So, when you find a, co I mean, a question with your force and acceleration, you have to immediately try out with your Dirac principle or your Newton's law. That is force F is equal to m into a. Is it not? Ma. That is the equation. Force equal to mass into acceleration. Then, the work energy method is used for again problem involving, to solve the problem involving your force, velocity and displacement. Force, velocity and displacement. What is this work energy method? Sigma F into S is equal to W by 2G into V square minus U square. Is it not? Initial minus final velocities. That is your use of work energy method. Then third, impulse momentum method. This which you are going to see now. The impulse momentum method is again problems involving force, time and velocity. This is force, velocity and displacement. The impulse momentum method is used for or uh, to find the solutions in force, time and velocity. That we will see. Okay. So, based on what method it is, if you are clear with what method you are using, it will be easier to understand. So, okay, this momentum in the formula is nothing but within two time periods, you know, t1 and t2, you are finding out time, that is it. F into t, it is force into time, that is it. That is your equation, that we will see. And before that, this impulse momentum. Impulse momentum method. So, basically, impulse means a very large amount of force acting in a sh short time period. That's called impulse. You know, a simple example can be your uh, your cricket bat and your ball. Bat hitting the ball. That particular moment is that the amount of very large force acting in a small time, so that there is some displacement, that is called impulse or the, when a car is moving, you talk about, you know, talk about a moving body, automobile, car is moving, you are moving at a particular speed, you apply brake, so that you make the wheels come to rest, is it not? So, a large force is applied to see that the body comes to the rest. So, this impulsive force is the one, which is uh, it is the impulsive force, a large amount of force acting on a body in a very short time period, it is called impulsive force. And the momentum is again based on your Newton's second law of motion, that is momentum is what? m is equal to m into v, what is this? Mass into velocity. So, change in momentum is final momentum F V M V minus M U or M into V minus U. Is it not? So, the impulsive force is denoted by symbol I that is nothing but within a time period of T 1 to T 2, a small time period, your large amount of force into D T. Clear? That is your impulsive force. So, this impulse momentum method can be used to find out again the problems to be solved in which were involved force time and velocity.
we will solve one question in this and see that how it is useful. Okay. So, it is this combination of your Newton's second law and your impulsive force which is nothing but a large amount of force acting on a body or an example of applying a brake suddenly for a tire when it is in the moving condition what will happen? A big force will act so that to keep the body in, you know, you can mean stable that is it. So, uh, when you talk about the moment of the body I mean the motion of the body it is in the positive side. When you apply brake what will happen? It, it becomes it is an opposite force, no? break is actually an opposite force, it will stop the body. So, normally this momentum force will be taken in the negative direction because the body is in moving condition, for that you are just blocking it, is it not? So, your bat hitting a ball means the ball is in one direction, you, you are going to hit it with a large force which is in the opposite direction. So, the nature of the momentum, the sign convention will be negative it is. So, that we will see in the problem now to solve it. It is a problem about your impulse momentum, a car of mass 150 kilogram uh, which is moving at a speed of 36 kilometer per hour. Uh, when this car is moving, you know, it is in the moving the road, so between the tire and the road, the friction developed is 0.45, the coefficient of friction is 0.45. The question is to find out what is the time needed to stop the car, right? So, what I will write, this is just a car moving on the road, this is your weight. What is the car weight? 150 kilogram, fine, this is the direction of motion, of motion, is it not? The direction of motion is like this, you are trying to stop the car which means your friction will be your impulsive force, impulsive force will be in the opposite direction, right? And you have the normal reaction NR, clear? So, this is direction of motion, motion of the moving car. Now, what is uh, basically mu is, okay, F into NR. F is equal to mu NR, sorry, no. Force is mu into normal reaction. So, normal reaction is nothing but your W only. NR is equal to W. So, mu is given 4.45 into this is 150. So, you will find the force. 0.5 into 150 will give you a force in terms of Newton. This is a force applied for this car. But we have to find out the time needed to stop the car. What is the time required to stop the car? What is the use can use? Impulse momentum equation. What is this? It is your change in momentum, final momentum or initial momentum. That is the initial momentum minus impulsive force, impulse, okay, or impulsive force is equal to final momentum. This is what your equation is, is it not? So, what is initial momentum here? M into U, small. Impulsive force is, what is impulsive force? That is your frictional force. Force is given as F, this value will get some, say suppose I write 100 Newton. The answer you get from here may be some value, I am writing 100 Newton is equal to what is final momentum? Mass into final velocity. What is final velocity given here? 36 kilometer per hour. I am sorry, final velocity is not given, initial velocity is only given 36 kilometer per hour. U is equal to 36 kilometer per hour. How to convert? 36 by terms of meter per hour is okay, 60 seconds. So, this value you will get, some value. So, you are going to find out this and the time required to stop the car. So, this value you will get in terms of substitute for this u here and mass this side and uh, your value is mass is 150 kilograms given and find this value 
एम इन टू टी है सॉरी एम इन टू टी बस देन फाइंड आउट द टाइम इन सेकेंड्स सो इज एज सिंपल एज द फोर्स टाइम एंड वेलोसिटी इज इन्वॉल्व हियर फोर्स टाइम एंड वेलोसिटी वट आर इन्वॉल्व यूज इन दिस इम्पल्स मोमेंट ऑफ इक्वेशन फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ द टाइम सो बेस्ड ऑन द प्रॉब्लम गिवन यू बेस्ड ऑन दिस टेबल ऑफ कॉलम You have to easily identify when force is given. This what is this here? This is velocity is given, right? Velocity. Time was given. Time we have to find out. And force. Force is be calculated by this equation. You will find out the answer. That's it. You know, impulsive force is initial momentum minus impulsive force into final moment into final value. So you will get time period. That's your answer. Okay. So one or two questions you can base on this. If you do it, is available in the book. The concept is same, but you have to practice it.